What's up guys, it's Yuval here and in today's video I want to show you guys how to color grade two different looks. The first one is going to be a commercial look, so it's going to be bright, clean and white. And the second one is going to be more of a film look, so it's going to be gritty, dirty and it's going to have a lot of character. So I think it's going to be really interesting seeing how I approach these two different looks and the different methods and steps that I take to create them. And as always, at the end of this video we're going to have a giveaway, so stay tuned for that. But now let's start color grading. Okay, so we're in DaVinci Resolve and I'm gonna start with the commercial look. We're gonna make it clean, we're gonna make it bright. Um, so let's go ahead and start creating our first nodes. So I'm gonna create three nodes. First one is going to be um, balance. Second one is gonna be white balance. And the third is gonna be our Rec. 709 transformation. So I'm gonna start with the Rec. 709 transformation. And this footage that I got here is shot on Red Log 3. So I'm gonna go into my LUTs and I'm gonna go down into Red. And there we go, Red Log 3. And if your footage is anything else, just make sure you're using the right LUT to make the conversion. So we can see our footage has now transformed from a Log to Rec. 709. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go to my White Balance node because I see the image is looking a little bit warm and I wanna make it more uh, cool and crisp. So I'm gonna go into my temp and tint and I'm just gonna uh, make it a little bit cooler. Uh, maybe somewhere around there. And then going back into my balance node, I'm just gonna stretch the highlights a little bit. So I'm just raising up uh, the gain and you can see in the uh, parade right here on the scopes, we're just raising um, everything a little bit up. So we're getting more of that bright uh, look. And then I'm just gonna pull down my lift to get the shadows in the right place. I don't wanna crush them, but I do want them to be um, on zero here, just touching it. So we know that our blacks are not elevated and they're at the right spot. So I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. And just by doing these three simple nodes, um, we've already come a pretty good way and we have a really good base to work off now. So let's continue and see what else we can do. So I'm going to create a set of parallel nodes and um, in this set I really want to focus on specific colors. I want to get some of this green out and I really want to control the individual use because um, really this, this whole look is more about taking out color rather than uh, pushing in color and that's really the key to getting a clean and beautiful look. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new node by pressing Alt S and then Alt P to create a parallel node. I'm going to create a bunch of these. So let's go to our curves and I'm going to do uh, U versus Sat. And I'm going to pick out this green color and let's see what we can do. So I'm just bringing it down and maybe I'll choose a little bit of a wider range here. So something like that maybe. And then uh, with the blues, I'm going to do something similar. So I'm going to pull that down as well. And you can see how much this affects the image. And obviously this is too much because it's, it's just starting to look like black and white out there in the background. So I don't want to push it that much. So I'm going to just control it, uh, bring it back a little bit. And maybe um, something like that. So before and after, not a major change, but we're just starting to take color away. And then on this node, I really want to control the skin tone. So I'm going to go uh, first for U versus Luma. And I, I want to see if I can pop her skin uh, even more and bring everything up even more. So I'm going to choose the yellows and I'm just raising it up a little bit. So a pretty big difference. Look at the highlights on her face. We're just popping her out. And then I also want to go into a U versus saturation again. And I want to take the reds and the yellows. And I just want to pop some saturation back into her face. Because right now, everything just looks kind of desaturated. We're going to have to get something in this image to be saturated. So that it doesn't feel overall like desaturated. So she's the main focus here if it's a uh, commercial then obviously we're going to want to focus on her. So I'm going to just pop out the uh, saturation here just by a bit. Maybe something like that. So yeah, that, that made a pretty big difference. Just look at that. Let's go full screen. And yeah, that, that's pretty, that's pretty big. And let's name this uh, skin. 
or um, maybe face. And let's move on to the next node. So in this next node, I think I'm just gonna add some contrast because I, I feel like we're missing some of that. So I'm gonna just create a pretty simple S-curve. Just being careful not to crush the shadows too much and really focusing on giving the highlights that pop. Uh, maybe something like that. So yeah, that, that really gives us some punch to the image. And then I just want to go back for a second to our white balance node. And our image is pretty balanced, but it's just a little bit boring uh, for me. Uh, I want to give it some more of a look, but still keep it clean. So I am just going to push some more blues. So I'm going to take my temp down a little bit more. Maybe something like that. Um, just, it just gives the image more of a cool, crisp look. And I'm gonna leave that last node, but if you feel like we need it later on, then we'll get back to it. So um, what I really wanna do now is create a vignette that is really gonna pop out our subject here. So I'm gonna create a new node and then I'll create a new window. I'm gonna feather it out. And then I'm gonna go into my curves and just bring it up, bring it up somewhere around there it looks pretty nice and then i'm just going to create an outside node so we're going to do the reverse we're going to darken the edges like the outside and i'm going to do that by pressing alt o and that's just automatically going to create um, the opposite node and that one i'm going to pull down there we go so that's like such a big change if i do a uh, quick before and after for both of these nodes like, just look at that, like, it centers our eyes immediately into our actor. This looks nice, but it, uh, it's just a little bit flat, I don't know, there's, there's just not that much depth in there. And uh, if I toggle on these two nodes, the vignette nodes, um, just, I mean, it just made a really big difference. So I'm gonna call this vignette, and this one is vignette out. And then I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna go into Open Effects and I'm gonna search for Glow. And if you have the free version of uh, Resolve, then um, you won't be able to use Glow, unfortunately. But I'm just gonna make it quick and show you guys how to do it if you do have the full version. So I'm gonna bring that down. I'm gonna bring the brightness down and then the opacity. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna make it really subtle. So yeah, I think maybe something around that. I'm just gonna call it low. Let's do a quick before and after. So it just helps soften things up and like softens up your skin and the, all of the highlights. It just gives a little bit of a dreamy look, which is really nice and works nicely for a commercial. And now I do want to go back to the last node that we made here on the parallel nodes. And I just want to mess around with the uh, blues there in the background a little more because I feel that we might have taken them down um, too much and I want to bring some of that back. So I'm going to go into U versus Sat and let's see what we can do. So, so I've just added a little bit back uh, the saturation of the blues and I've taken the greens uh, a little bit more down. Uh, not a major difference, but um, what I really think we should do now is go back to our balance. And I just wanna take our blacks a little bit down. So maybe something like that, um, that just looks uh, way better. And yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at that. And let's go full screen. And let's see a quick uh, before and after of everything that we've done. So this is where we started and this is our final result. So uh, very clean, very bright, um, a little bit to the cooler side of things. Um, it just feels more crisp and nice. So this is something that would fit more of a commercial rather than a film or uh, a short talk or something like that. And now we can move on and start creating the film look and it's gonna be so much different, but it's gonna be really cool to see. So um, let's start doing that. So for my film look, I really want to get it dirty. I want to get it gritty, uh, more cinematic. And uh, we're going to 
do that by first starting off with a film print emulation. So we're going to instantly get that film look and um, then we're gonna end it off with grain and we're really gonna um, spice things up. So let's go. So my first note I'm gonna keep for bass. Um, this one's gonna be white balance and then um, this one, instead of being a Rec 709, it's gonna be a film print emulation. So let's go into our LUTs and I'm going to go into film looks and I'm gonna go for the Fuji D65. So um, right off the bat, this looks pretty bad, right? But don't worry, we're gonna go into our base node and with the primary wheels, we're gonna really push up with the gamma and we're gonna stretch out our gain and bring back the lift here, the shadows. So something like that. And then on the white balance node, we're gonna go and fix that. And then I'm also gonna push quite a bit of saturation um, into our first node here. So now we can really start seeing what we're doing. So back to our white balance node. Let's dial it back a little bit. Something like that. And then we have this. And now I'm gonna create a new node and I'm gonna call it look. So what I wanna do here is just bring down the overall exposure. Do something like that. I'm just gonna create more of a mood. It's gonna look more cinematic and more dramatic. And I do wanna push my saturation up even more. And then I'm gonna inject some greens into the shadows. Then I'm gonna push the highlights kind of towards teal, blue, something like that. And I'm gonna use my gamma to balance things out. So maybe somewhere around there and don't worry about her skin because we're getting it all green. But we're gonna fix that by isolating the skin on a different node. So we're gonna press Alt P to create a parallel node. And then I'm just going to select her skin using the qualifier. And then I'm also going to create a window just to keep it just on her face. And we can also track that if we want. And now I'm gonna go back into my uh, log wheels and I'm gonna try to counteract this green color by pushing more towards uh, magenta. So maybe somewhere around here and then I kind of want to desaturate it a little bit. And then I'm going to go back into my look node and uh, using the log wheels, I just want to clean up um, these black areas because I feel like we've kind of affected them too much and it doesn't look very clean. So under my log wheels, I'm going to push the shadows until I feel like things are starting to clean up. And I'm mainly looking at the darkest areas, so um, all of this darkness in our hair and like those parts of the background. So I'm just trying to balance it out. So let's see where we are so far. Before and after. Looking pretty nice, but let's keep going. I'm gonna create a new parallel node, again by clicking Control P. And now I really wanna control the colors in the background individually. So I'm gonna go into my curves and I'm gonna go into U versus U. And first off, let's select these blues and I wanna get them just a little bit more teal, somehow there. And then um, the greens. And then I also wanna control the luminance for these U's. So now I want to push this even more, so I'm going to create a new node and I'm going to take the gain, the highlights, and I'm going to take it a little bit towards yellow, yellowish green, something like that. And then I'm going to take my lift and push it kind of in the same direction. And then I'm going to counteract that with the gamma. So we're pushing it quite a lot. And um, let's see, this is before. Um, nice, but like pretty clean. And then this is really like, giving us a really strong look, maybe too strong, 
So I'm gonna go into my uh, node key and I'm just gonna dial it back um, until it's kind of a blend between the two. So yeah, maybe something like that. And then if I go full screen, uh, this was before and this is after. So this is really giving us uh, like a strong look. It really gives a lot of character. And um, personally, I like this. So I'm gonna keep it that way. And let's call it um, look two maybe. And I'm gonna go back into my base node and I just wanna lift up the shadows um, just a bit. Because they're just a little bit too crushed for my liking. And then using the low range, I'm just gonna make sure that I'm only grabbing um, what is actually clipping. So take a look at the scopes over here. We can see um, as I pull this, um, the blacks are going up and they're not that crushed anymore. And then I'm gonna finish this look off with a grain. So I'm gonna call it grain. I'm gonna go into open effects. I'm gonna search for grain and let's apply some grain over here. I'm gonna go for um, 16 millimeter uh, 500T. That's gonna be my starting point. And I'm really gonna go crazy here with the grain size, uh, especially because you guys are watching it on YouTube and I'm not really sure if you, can, if you could see the difference. So I'm just gonna exaggerate this a little bit, um, but do this to your taste, of course. So um, yeah, again, I'm not sure if you guys can see this over on YouTube, but um, just the grain is adding, like let's zoom in here. Um, let's go full screen actually. Like this is adding a lot of texture and grit to the image. And um, it's really adding a lot of character. So I'm gonna keep it at that. And then I do wanna add a vignette actually before the grain. So let's create a power window. And then let's pull the curves down. And now obviously it's darkening the center, which is not what I want. So I'm just gonna click over here to reverse it. And now we can see that the outside is getting darker and not the inside. So I'm going pretty dramatic with that. Um, I like it. And then I do wanna add just a tiny bit of glow just to bring some softness uh, to the image. So before and after, just a small touch, but I really think it helps just take a little bit of that digital edge off. And yeah, that's gonna be it for the film version of this grading. And you can see it just looks uh, way more cinematic than the previous one. It's way dirtier, it has more color, it has more grit to it. While the commercial look was really clean and crisp, um, this one is a lot more character, it's like in your face, it looks like a movie. And I really enjoy this look, honestly. I like doing this more, but obviously it depends on the project and the type of look that is needed for that. So a commercial is gonna be very different from a film or a short doc or something like that. And that's just what I really wanted to highlight uh, with this tutorial. So that is all for this video. I really hope it helped you guys out and I hope you enjoyed watching it and you liked it. Uh, if you did, give this video a like and consider subscribing to never miss another one of our videos. For today's giveaway, one of you guys could win a free one year junior subscription to ArtGrid, our stock footage platform. All you gotta do is let us know down in the comments below what do you want us to talk about next. Here are the three lucky winners from our last giveaway. Congratulations to you guys and until the next one, stay creative.